continuing with our post-race media availability in the CampingWorld.com 500. We've now been joined by Gene Haas and Rodney Childers. And, and Rodney, we'll start with you. Um, and another incredible run by the team and, and Kevin today. And you become the first team as repeat winners um, again in 2015. You became the first team to do that last season in 2014. So talk a little bit about um, the dominating performance today. Yeah, I mean, it was a good weekend for us, for sure. Um, everybody did a, a great job all weekend, and and um, I, I know it didn't seem this way, but we actually struggled a little bit and uh, fought some of our some of our tools and different things uh, weren't matching up with the car this weekend, and, and um, finally we had to kind of wing it late model style and, and uh, finally got it going really good in happy hours. So um, the guys uh, at the shop have built uh, great cars and, and um, you know, everything just, um, it just went our way all weekend. You know, you come to these deals and, and some, some weekends it goes your way and sometimes it doesn't, and uh, whether you got a fast car or not. So uh, just proud of all the guys back at the shop um, that have worked so hard and, and uh, of course, Kevin. Uh, I think his record speaks for itself at this place. Um, you know, I told Claire a minute ago, uh, somebody asked me what was wrong with me this morning. I said that uh, I felt more pressure to win this one race at Phoenix than I did to win that race at, at Homestead. So, um, you know, it's just when you bring him here, uh, I think everybody expects him to win, and I didn't want it to be my fault if we didn't. So um, just proud of, every, proud of everybody, like I said, and, and just a great effort. And Gene, for you, uh, another dominate performance by the four team. Um, talk a little bit about that that team and, and their momentum and and coming off the championship. Um, you know what it's what it's like for them. Uh, well, um, I think they make it look easy, but at the same time, there's lots of preparation. There's uh, uh, you have to get the right people in the right places. Uh, you know, we have uh, an awful lot of support from uh, Hendricks and. Uh, Chevrolet and uh, you know all of our sponsors so I think when you see it and you see uh, uh, Kevin and Rodney out there making it look easy it really isn't easy lots of competition they're all very very good and uh, when it works well I think it's just a, an indication of, of you know a tremendous amount of uh, preparation on part of the team and uh, uh, the support we get from uh, all of our uh, members and associates We'll go ahead and take questions for Gene or Ronnie. Please state your name and affiliation, and we'll start with Reed. Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire Service. Rodney, uh, was there any any decision at all to make on that last caution as to whether to get tires or not? <laughs> that was the one I thought about all night last night. I knew it was going to happen, and um, you know, here in the fall, the same type deal happened and we stayed out and, and it seemed like the car would fire off pretty good there and, and run some good lap times and um, it seemed to do that again you know even when we were leading it seemed like when he could clear some traffic it would it would come back to him pretty good so um, you always you always worry you know when when actually when Kurt lined up 10th on the restart I, I thought to myself if there's enough cautions he'll be the, the one to beat and um, but we were fortunate that, that we you know, were able to get some good restarts and get out front and, and kind of put some distance on some guys. And, and um, you know, it, it, we were just fortunate that it worked out. Okay. We'll go to Kenny Bruce next. You can get a microphone to Kenny. Thank you. Kenny Bruce with NASCAR.com. Rodney, you talk about feeling the pressure because Kevin runs so well here. And, and you, you know, you want to make sure that you guys do everything. Are there tracks where you expect to do well as a crew chief because it fits your your style yeah probably you know if you look through all my years probably the two best places for me were always bristol and charlotte um you know it and win a lot of races at either one of them but you know with ruderman i think we finished the top five every time we went to bristol and then when brian got in the car we finished the top five in four races straight so um you know, those were those were my two favorite places. Uh, you know, I raced at Bristol growing up and enjoyed it and understood the racetrack and what it took to be good there and and um, you know and, and racing behind uh, Charlotte, you know, once a month or whatever and racing on the the front straightaway in Legend cars and you know when you when you do that it, it means a lot to you and just like coming out here for Kevin, um, you know when it's when it's your background and. And something that that helped you get to this point, you, you know, you you want to win at those places. So, uh, you know, that's it, it. It's 
I put my, I put enough pressure on myself. I think every weekend, but um, but it definitely seemed to, to get me more this week. All right, we'll take our question, next question from Ryan, and then we'll go up front to Stan and Tom. I thank you. This question's for uh, Ronnie's. Oh, whoops. Uh, Ryan O'Hara, Race Chaser Online. So at the beginning of the race, um, something that I hadn't seen uh, at Phoenix in a while, you know, um, Kevin Hart being challenged on a restart. Joey Logano was, was able to get ahead of Kevin on, I, I believe, the first three restarts, led the first 26 laps. Uh, was Kevin saying anything on the radio, like what to do or anything they needed to adjust? Um, I think that was my fault. Um, I decided a month ago that we weren't going to bring a transmission here that we could shift with and it wasn't going to be an option and and uh we hauled off into one the first lap of the race and all them guys downshifted and we didn't and there we go so uh we had to figure it out from there but uh just a poor decision on my part but uh you know hopefully we can fix that before we come back and, and do a little better job all right thank you we'll go with stan and then tom Dan Creekmore with competitionplus.com for the crew chief. So you, you talked about the pressure of coming into this event because of his history here and everything. Next week you go to his home. <laughs> uh, so does the pressure just stay up there or does it even, or does it increase? Or does it go down because you did win here? I think at this point everybody just expects you to, to keep winning and that's what makes it hard on all of us. Um, yeah, I feel like we've got a team that could do that. We've got a driver that can do that. We've got the resources and all to do that. But um, the more you win, the more you expect out of yourself and the more pressure you put on yourself. So, um, you know, when we when we left Vegas last week, he made a point to say, I want to win all three of these West Coast races. And um, I think anybody that knows Kevin Harvick, if, if he puts his head to something, he's, he's going to try to make it happen. So... Um, you know, just like we talked about a minute ago, the, these races mean a lot to him. He grew up around here and has a lot of family around here, and, and um, you know, that's, that's our goal for sure. Go ahead, Tom. Hi, Tom Jensen, FoxSports.com for Gene. Gene, you had Kyle back today. What did that mean to the team and to you personally, and do you have any doubts that, given the speed these cars have, that he'll win soon as well? That was Kurt, not Kyle. I'm sorry, Kurt. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I think it was great having uh, Kurt back, uh, in, and I think uh, there's uh, you know a light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, because w now we know what to expect. And in, in, in uh, you know in the previous months, it was just nothing but question marks, and uh, there's a lot of questions. What are you going to do? And how's this going to unfold? And and you know the only answer you can say is we have no idea. You know, we can't control any of this. Um, so we were we were as much in suspense as anybody, but that fueled, I think, all the speculation and the media frenzy, which just it piled on and made it, it made it quite a bit worse for us, because uh, you know we were, you know, we were just at the, uh, <clears throat> uh, I don't know, the, the timing of, of NASCAR and um, <clears throat> the uh, 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 the police department out of Delaware, and I think those things just put a tremendous amount of pressure. So here we are. You know, week a week later after we've been reinstated by NASCAR, I you know we we appreciate what NASCAR did. I think they did the right thing. Uh, I was a little bit stunned, I think, by uh, the fact that uh, uh, Kurt was pulled out several days uh, before Daytona, which just seemed so incredulous to me that two days before Daytona 500 to to do that to a driver, uh, I, this didn't seem right. But the way things unfolded, that uh, 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 you know, it worked out. Um, uh, we didn't really lose too much time, and Kurt now is back in the car. I think he's razor focused. Uh, he appreciates there that you know driving at this level is a privilege, and it certainly isn't anything he has a right to, or any of us have a right to. So uh, it, it can go away. It can go away just as fast as a car can go away in, in a race. So he, I think he has a, a great appreciation for that, and I think as the team. Uh, you know, we, we appreciate that, that it's a, a very tenuous relationship when you have the superstars in front of the media and if there's any kind of negativity of how bad it can go. But I have to admit that in the last week or so, it seems like things have reversed. And I think Kurt uh, has, has a, a much more uh, focused attitude. 
and uh, now he can get back to business. And I think he's really dedicated himself to, uh, you know, winning a championship. So uh, hopefully in the long run when we look back on this, we'll look on it as, as a bump in the road and, and, you know, on the way to winning a, another championship. And Lee, if we can get a microphone to Lee, please, for our next question. Lee Spencer Motorsport. And to follow up on that, Gene, um, you gave him, you promised Kurt that his ride would be waiting for him. What did that mean to him? And secondly, uh, since we really didn't get a good explanation, can you tell us what happened to Tony out there? Uh, well, with Kurt, uh, there was no guarantees. Uh, you know, we, we were like you. We, we didn't know what was going to happen. It was, you know, NASCAR uh, made statements about what they were going to do because obviously NASCAR has a, uh, you know, I think a, a higher uh, <coughs> respect, I, I think, as, a, as a, uh, uh, a media company to, to do what they thought was best. So we didn't exactly know what they were going to do, but it was going to be based upon what the other parties did. So in, 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 that, in that respect, uh, you know, there, there, was, there was nothing that we really planned as far as, you know, was Cart going to come back or not. I really thought that wasn't really, uh, that, was a, that was just something we didn't have any control over. If things would have gone the other way, uh, it would have been a completely different scenario, but fortunately they, they came the way, uh, you know, the, we're happy, we're back at racing, and hopefully next week there will be other stories to, uh, you know, focus on instead of this. Uh, as far as uh, Tony, Tony's a, uh, you know, Tony's a champion. He's used to driving 800 horsepower alcoholed uh, sprint cars on mud and, you know, snail snot and whatever is out, else is out there. And I think it, it's, he has a tremendous amount of talent for adapting to things quickly. Um, so I, I think it's just a little bit of time it will take him to, to adapt to this reduction of horsepower, which is probably something he, I don't think he likes that. But that's kind of speculation. I mean, I think really tr great drivers want as much horsepower as you can because that's part of the, the thrill is to be able to take these machines with, you know, 900 horsepower and, 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 and get them to slide around these turns at speeds. And, and when you take that away, you know, the, the, I guess the hope is that we have better racing. But I think it also, uh, you know, the, the drivers at, at the top end of this uh, sport, you know, probably think, well, you know, that makes it, that makes it a different kind of car to drive. It doesn't take nearly as much uh, pedal skills. So I think, I think Tony will be back. He's a, he's a very adaptable driver. He, he didn't get to this level by chance. Uh, tremendous amount of skills. And uh, I, think, I, th I think it just takes a little bit of time. We've now been joined by our race winner, Kevin Harvick, driver of the number four, Jimmy Johns, Budweiser Chevrolet. And Kevin, if you'll bear with us for a few minutes, we're going to roll through a couple impressive stats. This is Kevin's second victory of 24. 15. It's a seventh victory and 14th top 10 finish at, in 25 races at Phoenix International Raceway. Harvick is the first driver to win four straight races at a single racetrack since Jimmy Johnson did um, four straight at Charlotte in 2004 and 2005. And Harvick is the first driver to finish in the top two seven consecutive times since NASCAR Hall of Famer Richard Petty did in 1975. So Kevin, um, another impressive win by your team and, and talk a little bit about the momentum and, and coming to Phoenix and winning not only um, two in a row but then also four here at this track. Yeah just when you said the Richard Petty part that gives me chills. Um, you know I'm just really proud of, of everybody at Stuart Haas for everything that they do. Um, really proud of, of Rodney and, and these guys on his team because I feel like we get better as we go through different situations and, and um, you know, you, you see these guys hang out together and, and how mellow everybody is and, and how everybody gets along. And it's just, it's, it's, it's really, really special to be a part of and, and really just happy to, to be a small piece of, of what's going on. So just really proud of, of everybody at Stuart Haas and, and everybody on our number four team. We will open for questions for Gene, Kevin, or Rodney. Does anyone have any additional questions? All right, we'll come up front to stand. Stan Creekmore with CompetitionPlus.com. Obviously, this was an amazing win today. You didn't look like anybody could, could come even close to you. So that's my first question. Was there any moment in time where you thought anyone could come close to you? Well, those restarts were, were uh, a little bit nerve-wracking because yesterday I'd, I'd learned that, you know, as, as the, the racetrack got rubbered up, the restarts were going to be sketchy. Uh, to say the least, just for the fact that uh, the cars were going to slide around, they weren't going to do anything correctly, and um, it didn't matter where you were on the racetrack. You just, when you got to the exit of the center of the corner, 
Um, you needed to have your car pointed in the right direction so that you could get as much throttle down. So I think Saturday really helped me uh, just understand some things uh, that, that were going on with the racetrack and, and things you needed to concentrate on as, as we went to the day. We went to the hockey game last night as a team, and, and uh, Rodney and I talked about everything that, that we went through yesterday, and, and just these guys made some good decisions based upon that information and, and the stuff that we fought in practice. So that's really what it comes down to is just the, the communication between the group and you know, taking in all the information that you have, and, and these guys just make good decisions based upon the information that we have on a week-to-week -week basis going into the race. And um, you know, I'm just I'm just lucky to be the guy riding it. And how much pressure is your crew chief under to make sure that you complete three in a row? Well, I don't I don't know that. Do you ever get Do you ever feel like you're under pressure? Okay. <laughs> When he's, I guess when he's under pressure, his pulse might be like 55. <laughs> he's on the verge of being dead uh, when he's just, you know, happy and, and riding along. So that's the, that, I mean, that's, that's just one of the, the great things about everything that we have going on is, you know, he's on that end of the spectrum with calm and collective, and, and when he gets wound up, he gets even quieter. Uh, for me, um, you know, I get, I get wound up and, and, and tend to just get more wound up. So it's a great balance uh, bet between the two of us because of the fact that, you know, you can kind of find that, that middle road and, and really, um, you know, balance. Balance is a thing that you guys hear me talk about. I know you, I know you, you all probably get tired of hearing me talk about it, but there's a, there's a balance with your personal life. There's a balance with the job uh, and, and what you do, but there's also a balance within your team and the things that you do and, and how everybody works together and, and just finding that balance has just worked out. And uh, they've done a great job of putting those people in the right places and, and um, it's just working. We'll take our next question from Kenny Bruce. Go ahead. Congratulations in the back. Uh, just wanted to ask you, when did you plan to do the backwards lap? You know, that's, that's um, always something that I always tell myself that I want to do because I know, you know, what that was, um, what, what this place was to Allen and, and everything that they accomplished here. And I know that there's a lot of these race fans that were here um, and saw the Polish victory lap and, and the way that he celebrated. And I just thought it would be kind of cool to, to, to be able to finally do a complete one uh, mm -hmm. to go around to all the fans and, and do that, that victory lap. So... Um, it was just a, you know, that was just a moment that I probably should have done a long time ago that, that uh, just my, my memory gets really short when things start, start happening. So, um, you know, finally today I was able to, to remember to, to do that. And, and really the thing that triggered it was actually Mark Martin complaining about everybody doing burnouts on Twitter. So I figured today I'd give him something, to, I'd give him something else to watch, and, and hopefully, uh, hopefully he liked that. Okay, Kenny, go ahead. Kenny Bruce with NASCAR. Up. Com. Kevin, if, if you run bad, it tends to stick with you a little while. You know, it's, it's hard to, to put a bad run behind you. But if you win, how, how quickly do you forget about I won last week and I won the week before and, and are focused on what's next? Well, I think, I think for, for confidence, winning is, is something that ultimately makes the confidence level in myself and Rodney and everybody on this team know that, that you, can, you can make things happen in, in, in many different types of situations. But I think as you go to the next race and, and you, you go to California, it's nothing like what we've done here today or nothing really like what we did at California. You, you just have to forget about what you did. And these guys are really good at just... You know, being happy about what we did last week and, and not talking about anything other than what we're going to do at California this week and, and how we prepare for that and, and not taking your eye off the prize and staying focused on, on what we need to do for California and the past history and the, and the things that have, that have happened there over, over time. So um, they'll finish the notes and, and things tomorrow morning and, and the next thing you know, um, they won't open them again until it's you know six weeks, five weeks before we we come back to uh, to race here at the end of the year, and, and the California notebook will open, and, and all of a sudden that'll be all we talk about. I mean, you can ask him. I'll probably critique today more than I will the days that we that we run bad, um, you know, because there's a lot of things that that we could do better, and you know, little areas that, that we can work on and, and just we'll, we'll have notes upon notes. But I won't approach the, the you know, the post-race report any different than I will a race than we, that we run 20th and probably have more information today of things that we could and couldn't do um, on a day like we win. Would, is that fair to say? 
We'll take our next question from Jim Utter. Jim Utter, Shaw Observer. Uh, for Kevin and for Rodney, in a sport where uh, so many things can go wrong at any given time, do you think it's difficult for people on the outside to appreciate how much goes into days like today, uh, and in particular when you do it two weeks in a row? Well, I think, I think, I guess the casual fan, I guess would somewhat understand. I think that the the, the fan that doesn't really understand our sport is is really uh, still thinks we work in a three car garage and and only race one car every week and and doesn't understand that you're uh, you know you're two, three hundred million dollar business that, that functions with three hundred people, four hundred people, five hundred people, whatever that number is at, at every given company. And it's just a it's a massive, massive machine. And when you have the undertaking of, of hiring that many people and being responsible for that much money, there's a there's a lot of things that go on. There's a lot of moving pieces. Um, you know, this time of year that the travel coordinator and the truck drivers are the most abused people in the sport. Um, just because of the fact that they're that they're all over the country and um, trying to get these guys from from point A to point B, and then you know you financially you want to leave them out here and, and try to um, save on travel and, and still get your cars transferred. So there, it's just a it's a huge machine that, that just takes massive amounts of people and, and money to to operate and, and organize and do the things that, that that it takes to to do it good. For Gene, Kevin, and Rodney, can Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Rodney. Jim, I don't hardly remember what you said. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Mama. You know, I think um, you know, I think every single competitor in that garage appreciates what we do. You know, and watching us do what we've done the past two weeks, those guys. They appreciate that. They they know how much work goes into it. Yeah, they want to beat us, but um, you know, all the years of seeing people win races, whether it was me racing against Kevin or you know seeing Jimmy Johnson win, like maybe that's the type of person I am. But you have to appreciate that. Those you know, everybody works too hard not to, and um, you know, you always have to worry about every single person. You know, I had somebody ask me last night, like, who are you worried about? I'm like, well, I'm worried about everybody. You know, it's not. That's the way you got to be. You got to keep uh, working on your stuff and keep making it better. Uh, so if you don't, you're going to get beat. For Gene, Kevin, and Ronnie, congratulations on another victory, and we wish you the best of luck next week in Auto Club. See you, people.